I love it. Let's see who embraces a victory here and gets into the semifinals. Mountaineers start on offense. Both teams, uh, predominantly both teams, man to man. Appalachian plays it very differently, though. Forrest got stolen by Weatherford. App State plays that man to man, but it's like a pack line. It's basically a five man sagging man to man. You beat one guy, there should be four guys waiting for you. Elijah McCadden, the sixth man of the year in the Sun Belt, starting the second straight game for the Eagles in this tournament. Five on the shot clock for the Eagles. McCadden, pump fake with one, got to shoot it. Shot clock violation for Georgia Southern to start the game. Two drives by the Eagles of Georgia Southern and nothing out of it because the help defense was there. They missed Toyambi underneath. Here's a look at the starting five for the Mountaineers. Forrest, Almonese, who was the most outstanding player in this tournament a year ago, Gregory Delt and Lewis. 18 and 13, the Mountaineers, 12 and 6 in the Sun Belt. Best finish, highest seed since joining the Sun Belt eight years ago. And one. Donovan Gregory. Big strong man, 6'5", a buck 90. Gets by Weatherford, keeps his feet great. Pivoting is such an un, a lost art in the game of basketball. One pivot, two pivots, and power up for the bucket in the end one. Gregory completes the three-point play. Ten and a half points per game. Five and a half rebounds per game. Georgia Southern's starting five. McCadden, Cobbs, Yusupitis, Weatherford, and Toyambi. Eagles just 13 and 15 on the season. They finish 5 and 11 in the Sun Belt. But they have won two straight since losing six in a row. Toyambi, the rebound. Gets tied up. And possession arrow, Eagles, 18 seconds on the shot clock. Let's take a look at your keys to the game, Coach. First of all, for App State, they need to get in a stance and work. Dustin Kurtz told us at the end of a shot clock, it turns into a straight line drive. And secondly, downhills for skiing. You can't let them get those drives. For Georgia Southern, excuse me, for App State, it's cool in the countdown. At the end of a shot clock, they have to just keep their cool, and they will. And like I said before, the ball will be in Adrian Delft's hands. Mountaineers quite the story a year ago had lost six in a row when they arrived in Pensacola Nobody except maybe Dustin Kearns and the Appalachian State Mountaineers Expected anything from them in this tournament the step in and the shot by Justin Forrest who Has not had a great season, but he has been such a star player in this program so many big shots Dustin Kearns, 53 and 39, and he has transformed this program that has not had a lot of success since the days of Bobby Crimmins, and you were an assistant on Bobby's staff. Yes, so that was. was 40 years ago. Yes, it was. I tell you, Dustin Kearns did the best thing. Everybody loves the winner. He started filling that home center, and they have been not very good with crowds lately in, in the past couple of years, and they filled it this year down the stretch. Dell. Wow. Right on all total points scored this season, 536, number two in the conference, points per game. If you drive the ball against the Mountaineers, you've got to be ready to pass it because you're going to meet resistance from somebody else, even if you blow by your man because of the way they play man to man. Weatherford gives it up to use of Pitus. And a turnover for Georgia Southern. Well, there it goes, a late whistle. And Brian Berg jumps out of his seat. He's up at half court. He thought the pass had been deflected. But I didn't see that. I thought it was an over and back. That was just a bad pass. I agree with you. But the player should act like it was deflected, get it and go, rather than just walk back there and slap the ball. You might fake the ref out a little bit. There seemed to be some hesitation on the call.
Delft rises up for the three off the back iron. Lynchburg wants to push the pace. Bryant hit some big shots for him the other night against the Chanticleers. Musipitis lost the dribble. Another turnover for Georgia Southern. Not a good start for the Eagles. Look a little out of sorts, not in rhythm. Forrest, long three, swishes it. That's the Justin Forrest that we all have seen over the last couple of years. Well, they're going to be a dangerous basketball team. They can get Forrest going with Delph and Gregory from the outside, and Almonese. He scored half their points, five of the ten. Four turnovers, meantime, for the Eagles in their first six possessions. McCadden in the paint, got fouled. He'll go to the line. 6-4 strong and really quick with that first step, Elijah McCadden. Elijah McCadden, extremely talented, has great size. He's played some point guard. He's played off the ball. He's near Mountaineer land from Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Indeed, went to Greenfield School. Got a lot of tools in that tool belt. Can get to his right hand, hit the floater, get to the rim and finish. And so far, Georgia Southern, McCadden, nobody's really done anything well until that free throw right there. Yeah, only 20% of his field goal attempts are three, so he's the mid-range guy, but he's got the strength and the size to go over anybody who guards him. As we saw that time, he got fouled, but he can just stick a shot in the lane as well. Georgia Southern gonna show some pressure here as McCadden goes to the bench. He's trying to get some easy ones. Slap away, just some transition buckets. Eagles played so well on Thursday night against Coastal Carolina. Coach Berg says that was the best that he had seen his team connected defensively the entire. You know, I asked him, do you feel like this year you are the hunted instead of the hunter? He said, no, nope, don't feel that way at all. I think a lot of people just feel like we got hot last year. And it was kind of a fluke. We love playing with a chip on our shoulder. He told him, go get the respect you think you earned this week. Meantime, nothing going well for Georgia Southern here. Over for four from the field, one free throw. Delph gets in the paint. Going to get it out to Forrest. He'll launch a three and hit the iron. Run out opportunity here. Archie leads it for Georgia Southern. Trying to catch uh, that Cam Bryant, pardon me. Trying to catch that defense in a scramble situation. Here goes Saversoff. Saversoff inside, had his cha challenged and won. That was going to be called on R.J. Duhart. Adrian Duff got up grabbing that right foot. R.J. Duhart just in the basketball game because he can hit threes, and they took advantage of it. Saversoff took him to the house. Lay up in an and one. So Delph tightened that sneaker on the right foot. I guess he tweaked the ankle a little bit, but he's, he's not coming out. Saversov at the line. He's out of St. Petersburg, Russia. Obviously, the whole world knows what's going on in that part of the world. Coach Berg says they have not talked a lot about it other than just to make sure that Saversov's family's okay. Keeps that stuff pretty close to the best. Very understandable. Delt. And that's going to be a foul on Archie, Caden Archie. Delt's foot's bothering him. Keeps flexing that ankle on, the, on that when he made that move. He just, I don't know what he did at the other end, but he must have tweaked something. Two team fouls on Georgia Southern. Monacy will be the guy that brings it in. Delp fires back into the paint. Collision. Lots of lots of contact and no whistle. Yes, it was. They're letting them play right now. Almonacy three. High off the iron. Rebound Duhart. Defense. 
Long three dealt. Rebound underneath in the putback by Huntley. And the foul is going to be called. Cam Bryan is called for the foul. That's his first. So at the line for two is C.J. Huntley. He's been their most productive player off the bench this season. Coach Courage made mention of the fact he's at the line. Check those kicks out. Got a special order of them, size 18s. Wow. For C.J. Huntley, six foot ten. These things look like aircraft carriers. That's a big shoe. You don't go into uh, Dick's Sporting Goods and pick those off the shelf. No, sir. Nike will take care of you, though. Special order, those things. Yep. Seven-point lead, App State, opening six minutes. They just show you need to settle down a little bit, just let the game come to them. The defense is tough, but they've cracked tougher defenses than this. Archie steps through, fires out for a three-point attempt. And off the mark by McCadden. Appalachian will take an opportunity break, but if they get in the half court, they're going to make you work. Step back, Delp. And bounces over the top of the backboard. App now just one for seven on their three point attempts. And the unlikely guy that has the one is Forrest. This is true, and they're three for three on their twos, maybe more twos, right? It's good coaching right there. Good job. Archie drives, got his man in the air, missed, missed his tip. Lit on the basket for Georgia Southern. They've started one for seven. Underneath in the dunk by C.J. Huntley. Great pass, great look to get Huntley. Great rim run for Huntley. Nine-point lead, App State. Step back. And last touch by Georgia Southern. Big rim run by Huntley Duhart. Easy pass, easy dunk. CJ Huntley with the assist. State to this point. Delp missed off the impounds execution. There's a lucky bounce for Georgia Southern. See if they can take advantage of it. In the paint, another close miss, this time by Carlos Curry. Three pointer miss. Curry gets a rebound. The 6 11 big goes up and shot it over the hoop. Wow, that's three misses, two point blackness. One for 11 shooting inside Huntley. He was a Presbyterian college and went to App State. He took everybody with him, the whole staff, and they're still there. Great loyalty. He's done a tremendous job of reviving, rejuvenating all the reads that you'd like to talk about with this App State program. Now, they were down to about 500 in attendance at the Holmes Center, and he has turned that into a lively environment and uh, reinvigorated. The Mountaineer faithful. And a good friend from when I was back up there um, told me they had over 4,000 the last home game. Place holds probably about nine. Beautiful arena. Huntley got stripped. They're down to four on the shot clock. Got a fire. Forrest does and hits it. Steph Curry distance three. For Justin Forrest, he's got eight, leads all scores. He ran by and gave a look to Dustin Kearns, didn't say a thing, and Dustin Kearns acted like it was a layup. No reaction whatsoever. They've been patient with him while he has struggled this year. Toyambi inside got fouled. That's the second time in a row they've lost an inside player at Appalachian State. And a layup, this time it's going to be an and one opportunity. Justin Forrest saw the clock just at the right time. 
rattled it in. So Toyambi will be at the line for one. As Georgia Southern starts to show a little sign of life here on the offensive end. Great story about Toyambi. They were at Boone in the regular season, and their trip, their travel partner was Coastal Carolina, so they're coming down to Coastal Carolina. They got there late. And I asked Coach Craig, why were you late coming down? Trouble with the bus or bad weather? He goes, nope. Prince Toyami had his first interview, phone interview for medical school. He's since had a second one. We hope he gets accepted. The great Dr. Toyami. Already married, has a daughter. Aspirations to become a doctor and well on his way to it. McCadden goes on through, but the play got whistled dead. And a foul is going to be called on Saversov. Forrest got in Saversov's way. Held his ground, Saversov ran him over. Wipes away the bucket. Watch the left side of your picture. There goes Saversov, and he just got. Boy, James Forrest didn't get in his way. Saversov bowled him over. He just, well, Saversov went out of his way to take him out. It looked like it. I don't know how. However, however else you interpret that. He went out of his way. He was not running a straight line. He just ran right to him and knocked him down. That could have been a flagrant. That was definitely not a basketball play. We're just southern a little bit of a zone here. Two, three zone. Forrest dumps inside. Battle for the ball. It's lost. Lewis couldn't hold on to it. Savasovs drives, goes by Mantis, and gets it up and in. Big time play. From outside the three-point line, two dribbles and a layup and no help. Mantis got burned bad. Forrest way off the mark. McCadden in the paint. Got it back, lost it. And foul's going to be called on App State. I believe it's going to be on Forrest. Slipped it out, slipped out, or uh, the ball was caught and then going. Watch Saversov here. Not even a shot fake. One, two dribbles from outside the lane. Big first step. Big time play right there. They say he's getting better from year one to year two. And they got him back again. He was more of a perimeter-based player when he came to Georgia Southern from Texas Tech, where, of course, Brian Berg was an assistant for Chris Beard. Until Beard left for Texas, Berg got the job at Georgia Southern. Probably helped recruit him. Floater, Cam Bryant. If not recruited him by himself. That's Cam Bryant's game right there. Eagles have cut it to six after they trailed by as much as 12. They're definitely back in it. The zone has helped a little, but the making buckets has helped a little more. And the ball is thrown off of the official. That'll be a turnover for App State. Normally a play, but the official is standing out of bounds, so that's out of bounds right in front of us. Another opportunity to cut this thing to one possession. Sub in, Forrest back on the floor for App State, and Mantis comes out. Mountaineers have gone over two minutes now without scoring. Three taking an 18 to 6 lead. Three turnovers during that time. Through the Southern started cold as you could start, but they're right back in it. To the corner it goes. Yusupitis traveled, didn't he? Yeah. He dragged that back foot. That's what that defense does. You drive by your guy and there's somebody else waiting for you. Six turnovers. Watch his left foot. He was trying to keep the pivot foot planted. Uh, right right there. there. James Lewis didn't foul him, just stood there like a wall. Almanasi from the corner. Bryant the rebound for Georgia Southern. 
McCadden takes his man one on one. Missed high off the glass. Lewis rebound for the Mountaineers. Pretty good move, actually. He just couldn't finish it. Gregory. The Racers. Yep. I did a game up once. I, we had an off day between games. We did a weekend series. I said, what's the race? I want to see the horses. I said, you want to ride one? I said, no, thank you. But I went to the barns and saw them. It was cool. Donovan Gregory knocks down both free throws. Eight point lead for App State. Change the defense, get a little first trap, try to turn it over. Sabrasaw pulls up for a three. Long rebound, controlled by Cobb. Cobb's. Pass came back to him, and he was down on his behind. Couldn't control it. Boris steps on through. Lewis with the finish. Talked to Coach Kearns about Lewis. I said he's effective around the rim. He's, that's because I put him in a dunk position. It's exactly what he's there for. Somebody drives, there's help. He's right there to dunk it. Got to deal with Cobbs now. It's a tough, tough match. Cobbs tried to whip it around to Sabrasoff. It was knocked out of bounds by the Mountaineers. Delt touched it last. Seven on the shot clock. James Lewis Jr., right place, right time by design, not by luck. Sabrasoff helps. That was his man. Lewis slams it. That is the dunker spot that we were talking about. Yep. He does a lot, too. His job is to play dunker spot to dunker spot. Down to one on the shot clock. Shot clock violation. I, I'm not quite sure what Georgia Southern was thinking right there. They passed when they should have been shooting. That's eight turnovers. Only seven on the clock, and they use a lot more than that. When it gets down to one, you can't pass. you got to shoot. That was a <laughs> that's a great coaching point. That's right. That's why I've been doing this all my life. <laughs> That's a true statement. An astute observation. It's just That's like it. that. It's the Mr. Obvious category. In that zone, you got to find a probe it or bomb it on top wow. of it. Wow, James Forrest having himself a game. 11 points. I mean, this is the James Forrest that we've seen for so many years that Mountaineers fans really didn't get to see much of this year. Less than nine points per game this year. A first-team All-Sun Belt guy who just had a disappointing season. Double-figure scores, first three years in college. He can erase a lot of that here with a big tournament. Zavrasov spinning and turning, banked it in. Big time play to know where he was in the lane. That's a great play. We're just Southern at 2-3 zone. They've stuck in it probably except for the first three minutes of the game. to go man out of it. Almonese on the drive, missed it. Rebound Gregory, his putback was rejected. Great transition, D, not to get beat by the Mountaineers. Bounce into Sabrasov, banging bodies with Duhart, trying to go under him, and still got it up, but missed. Duhart did a good job, didn't leave his feet, just stood straight up in the air, made Sabrasov make a great play, and he didn't. Gregory bouncing in. Contact with Cobbs, gives it up in the corner to Almonese, nailed it. Almonese hit a phenomenal 23 pointers last year in the tournament on the way to Ernie, most outstanding player honors, had 32 in the final. Archie. They were trying to get it right back to him and a turnover again. And Sabrasov came in from behind and knocked Almonese's three-point shot into the bench. Once he made one, he said, let me get on a string here. Sabrasov said, nope. Kick it to the corner. Nobody near him. Nobody even closes out to him. That's like practice. Got to get out there. He's a very good three-point shooter, obviously. 
Then the next one, Cybersoft said, I'll get you, and he slapped it out of bounds. Lost out of bounds, last touch by the Eagles. Twenty four on the shot clock. Forrest the inbound. Pal McCadden. Number one on him, sixteen fouls on the Eagles. You're allowed one hand or one arm on him. The minute you put that second one on, automatic whistle. Whether you move him or not, it's just a rule. Almonese, who is a middle school teacher. He's working on it. He's working on getting his degree, his certificate, and he teaches in middle school there in the Boone area. Step back. Off back iron. That's the not so glamorous side, right? Yeah, you think he faces stress in a basketball game? Go be a student teacher in middle school. You want stress? Toyambi in a double team, puts it on the floor, tries to step under, had a shot blocked. The main goal is to not let you drive it because of the way they play that helping man to man. Two close games during the regular season. The Mountaineers won them both. A 70-62 road win January 22nd, and then a 65-61 home win a month later. Kamari Brown sticks it in. That's the way you kind of get to this defense. You drive it in and pull up before you get to the rim. The defense is waiting for you, but you don't go to him. Corey Brown with a nice follow on his first miss. Delp goes right by Toyambi, rolled off the rim. Almonese gets it back. Delp, three, off the side of the rim, and Bryant the rebound for Georgia Southern. Chance for back-to-backers. See if the Eagles can cut it below 10 before halftime. Kate Narchi strokes it in. Well, Monsey was there, but he really didn't get in his face. Kind of dared him. Archie stuck it. He played the four at UTEP before transferring to Georgia Southern, where he's played the one, two, or the three. So been a different position set for him in Statesboro. I just looked out of my style. Here we go, another one. Still by Archie and dunks it home. Kate and Archie was shooting 15% from Freeland before that last make. Back-to-back -back buckets for Archie, five points for his team. 7-0 run. Eagles have cut it to seven. Forrest pump fake, step back. Let's see if he's still got it. Yeah, he does. Just body and caught Huntley right in the head. As it was, though, that's the right call. Flagrant one at the very least. And that's what the officials said. Delp hits both free throws. And they're going to take him in the locker room, you see right there, and check him out with this much time. Before, even, even if there was 12 minutes left in the half. Make sure everything's okay. So now App gets the ball on top of the free throws and a chance to build the lead back to 14, which yep. has been their largest of the game. That might have been a travel. Coach Bird was yelling, too. I don't disagree with him. Uh, I thought the same thing. Caught it, took two steps. 6 on the shot clock, Almonese fading back and stroked it in. That was sweet. Step back to create some distance between you and the defender and great, great motion right there. Reminds me a lot of the guy we saw last year. 14-point lead for App State, and a foul is going to be called on App. On Almonese. <laughs> This was the guy that lit it up and became a darling of the tournament a year ago. I'm going to create space between you and the defender. He's, he's in the lane right there. That might be a travel, too. He ended up seven feet away from him. <laughs> but James Harden does it. That's in the NBA. They never called on him. And kids are copying the pros. Kamari Brown pulls up for three. Archie picks it up. 
and lays it in. Archie's been the energy for this basketball team in the first half. He's got seven tied with Eversoft for team high honors. Coach Kearns wants to clear it out, go make a play. Almanasi misses the floater. Georgia Southern a chance to cut below double digits. McCadden scoops it to Toyambi. Excellent pass. Go right at the defender, which happened to be James Lewis Jr. He's got to commit to one of you. Toyambi with a nice pass. Ten-point lead. 30 to go in the half. Stop here would be huge for the Eagles. Stole it. Archie nearly got the steal. So a difference of uh, seven seconds, game clock and shot clock here. Jaden Archie's definitely been the energy for this basketball team in the first half. He has seven points, four rebounds. He's been their best player on the floor. And foul. He's only play one defense. They're not going to change it. Clock running as Cobbs comes across half court. Might be a pick and pop for Saversoff, too. Good idea. It's only under 60, had one to waste. Foul to give, Lewis picks it up. Now the whole play you called, you gotta run something else or run the same thing again. Five seconds, Archie. He's been their guy here in the first half. Shot blocked by Duhart. Almanis. Up two minutes, second half. See if you can keep it going because he gave them a spark with 14 big points. And here's a look at our Bank Plus first half stats. Shooting percentage, obviously, Appalachian ahead in every category. Big time from the free throw line. Only six turnovers. We'll talk about that in a couple minutes, how they practice not turning the ball over in practice for Dustin Kearns. And then points off the turnovers that Georgia State committed 15 for the Appalachian State Mountaineers. Bank Plus, it's more than a name, it's a promise, member FDIC. The next time App turns it over, we'll tell you what they do in practice. Brought over from his days from the Presbyterian Blue Hose for Coach Crunch. Almanasi puts it on the floor and drives, left-handed scoop and one. Boy, talk about taking the contact on the right side and creating a shot. Michael Almanis, he's a great story as well for his whole basketball career, how it evolved. As the drive, he gets bumped on the right side, up and in on the left side. Yeah, he actually is on his third stop. He was at a D2 program. They canceled the program. He considered just hanging it up and not playing anymore. Landed at App State. Everybody's okay. They took a hard spill. Let's take another look at it right here. Right at the bottom of your picture. Uh, right on the back. They've already lost C.J. Huntley, who took an elbow to the head. Uh, efforting to find out any kind of status update for him as to whether he'll be available to come back. They love him tonight, but to be careful, they'd love to have him tomorrow. Absolutely. The floater and the miss. Rebound is battled for and won by Toyambi. And that's going to be a blocking foul. It's a lot of guys hitting the deck hard tonight. That's a lot. It's a wooden floor and it gives, but it's still hard. Forrest picks up the foul. That'll be number two on him. And they're not, they should get out there and wipe the floor up. Everybody slips. He slid a long way. This floor has been slippery when it's wet. Drive down the left side for McCadden. Yeah, he wasn't he wasn't in a good legal guarding position, but still it was a tough blow. Make sure that floor is dry over there. Too many slips tonight on this floor. This 14-point lead for App State matches their largest of the game. Yusupitis missed the floater. 
Lewis the rebound for App State. Now is, Monesey pushes. It is so tough to shoot the rim when you're moving laterally like that. Just bang it off the glass. If you miss, it'll come back. Forrest misses the three. He is human. He's four for seven on his threes in this game. Inside they feed. Toyambi will finish it. Picking the roll. Nobody picked up Toyambi on the roll. Good look from by McCadden to get it to him. Appalachian never switches. They got burned because of it there. Lost. Ahead it comes. Cobbs. Cobbs stops and gets it in. Great job there. Control of his body and the defender, which happened to be Forrest, blew right by and Cobbs laid it in. First basket of the game for Trey Cobbs. Inside, dealt, missed, challenged by Toyambi. Good defense that time. It'll be the Eagles' ball. Let's check in with Shelby. Matt, I tried asking App State's trainers on the status of Huntley. They were not able to give me any information, but I did catch up with Georgia Southern head coach Brian Burke. He said this second half, we have to work on transition defense, take care of second chance points, and offensively finish around the rim. He said, example, we cannot dig ourselves into a hole like we did beginning of the 12-0 run. Defensively, they're doing well, but they have to finish with more defensive rebounds. Thanks, Shelby. Ten-point lead app. Transition D is tough, and you turn it over, and a live ball turnover, and that's what hurt him in the first half. Cobb steps into a three. Rebound by Lewis. Eagles are one for seven on their three-point attempts. Forrest tried to split the defense, blocking foul on Georgia Southern. This is almost like the football rivalry with all the collisions that we've seen in this it's game. It's a great football rivalry in the, in the Sun Belt with App and Georgia Southern as well. You are right. I take James Forrest as a tight end on a football team in a heartbeat. Almost any of these guys find a position for him somewhere. Shot clock's winding down. They're going to clear out a side and let somebody go make a play. Almasi just looked up the clock at the far end and he knew how much time was left. Perfect. Wow, what a move by Almasi. A spin move to lose his man and then an open lane to the bucket. As soon as he caught the ball, he looked to his right at the shot clock at the far end. Knew he had enough time to make that move. Look out. He has 11. Forrest nearly intercepted the pass over near us and tipped it out of bounds. Watch how much he looked to the right. He saw the shot clock. Sets up the defender. A nice spin move as he leaves Kay Narchi in the spin cycle. Yeah, that's a great story. He thought about giving up basketball. Yeah. And last year, He's the story of the of the nation with his amazing performance in this tournament. Big time last game to take the Mountaineers to the dance. Average 22 points per game in their four Sun Belt tournament games. Blocking foul on the Mountaineers. This will be on Lewis. That's going to be the second personal on him and the second team foul on the Mountaineers in this half. But Almonese, student teaching. He's in middle school there. and. The Boone area, and because of it, the Mountaineers practice late in the day to fit his schedule. <laughs> oh my God, wait, school's over. Then he's got to get taped and treatment. Sometimes they practice at 6 p.m. He's getting his master's in English. English in middle school. Ah, that's a lot of work. Yeah. In Watauga County. God bless him. Yeah, amen. And by the way, if you don't know it, and I did it, as you, as if you're an education major, and I was a physical education major, when you student teach, you know what the pay is? Zip. It's experience. You get paid in experience. Yes, you do, and he's getting a lot of it. 
probably not near as glamorous as being a star player in the Sun Belt basketball mm, tournament. Not close. Coach Kearns told us it was great, though. He, he brought some of his kids to the games, his students, and they loved it. Saversoff banging bodies with Lou as it rolled off the rim. Almanasi the rebound. Got his head up looking down the floor. They just don't force the issue. Wow. Just a little bit off. He's looking at his hands like the ball was wet or his hands were wet and it slipped. His teammates are laughing. Now, Monacy, they were laughing about that. Nice move by Trey Cobbs. Good move by Cobbs, and Caden Archie's back in there, and he gave him a spark in the first half. They definitely need him again. He played for Chris Shoemate at Northern Kentucky, who's now an assistant on Brian Burke's staff. All Monacy. Nope. Rebound controlled by Cam Bryant. Bryant had a really big game on Thursday. He's only got two points today. It's a big one. Until right then. Right on cue, Cam Bryant buries a three. On that bucket, they go in 2-3 zone, the Eagles of Georgia State. Georgia Southern, excuse me. Lead is seven. Great ball movement. Now Montesi, rebound, Lewis goes back up with it, got capped on the play by Bryant. Arena, I don't know if there's some concern about that, but it looks like they've got it dried up and ready to go again. They've had a couple slippages, but all they can do is keep wiping it up every time out, and they did it in multiple places. Fade away, and the rebound by Almanasi. Seven point game, you get better shot than that. A fade away jumper from the baseline, you just get a better look. It's Kate and Archie time if they need another spark. Forrest drives, contact, got blocked from behind. Three on two if they Great push. Play by Kamari Brown, who takes it all the way and then missed the layup. Almonese drives, he lost it, he's on the floor. He gets tied up, and the possession arrow belongs to the Mountaineers. I think App State called a timeout. Well, they didn't need to. Yeah, you're right. They had the arrow. If they called a timeout because of the tie-up, no, we're going to have a foul, maybe? We'll no, figure it out. No, 30-second timeout, but it's going to be a media one. We'll figure it out when we get back. Loses the ball. Oh, jeez. App State shooting just 22% from the floor here in the second half. One of eight, one of their last eight. It's their longest drought tonight. Have not hit a three-pointer. And that's the reason the Eagles are back in it. The lead's gone to seven. It's been as much as 14. And it was 12 at halftime. Eight on the shot clock. Forrest driving. He got fouled on the play. When you drive from the top like that, there's no help side defense. So if you beat your man, you win. He didn't beat his man, but he got bumped. They go to the line for a couple. Trey Cobbs was called for the foul. That's number two on him. James Forrest, the leading scorer in this game. Three off his season high, now make that two as he hits the free throw. And if you don't know, and you probably do, his dad, James Forrest, played for Coach Kremens at Georgia Tech and was a special player. Absolutely. Yellow Jackets fans in Atlanta remember him fondly. They'll never forget the big three he hit to beat Southern Cal in the NCAA tournament. Yeah. 
And you'll see that replayed many times in the upcoming tournament somewhere sure. along the line. They will uh, bring it out of the mothballs and show it to you because it was a great buzzer beater. And his dad coached him and his AAU team in Atlanta because a former player of ours at the Citadel son played on that team. Bryant the miss and the rebound controlled by the Mountaineers. That was Michael Eads with the board. Delp on the drive and missed the floater. Duhart touched it last, knocked it out of bounds. Caden Archie's going to throw it in bounds. Caden Archie, Archie needs a spark he had in the first half. He's a drive down the middle, and Duhart definitely touched it last. Kamari Brown hit it and then off out state. Yeah, Archie had seven points, four rebounds, and that first half has not added any stats here in the second. Cadden had it bounce off the leg of Duhart, gets it back. Ten on the shot clock. Tried to hit Toyambi on the roll. To the corner, and Archie, and put it in! Three-pointer by Caden Archie right on cue. Absolutely. And it's down to six. He thought he got fouled, too. They stopped it to save the ball, and they had to substitute at the table, but they wouldn't let him in. Grant Weatherford's ready to come in. Boy, they need to stop here for the Eagles. Delt driving, dishes inside. Tomahawk from behind. What a block by Cam Bryant. McCadden drives. He had his shot blocked. Kamari Brown dish out Archie. Archie in traffic. Left it short. Rebound controlled by Eads. Block at both ends, no points. Dead ball, we're going to get a break. Delt puts it on the floor, banging bodies with McCadden. They swing it around, eight on the shot clock. Here comes a spin move. Almanasi, kick out. They're going to have to shoot with two on the clock. Eads buried it. Michael Eads. Averages three a game, just hit his average. Huge shot by Eads, sophomore out of Orlando. Nine-point lead for App again. It was at the end of the clock. That was big time. Talking about a kid doesn't play, plays about 12 minutes a game. Drive and the miss by Bryant. Big time advantage over on Monty. He just couldn't finish, slammed it up there too hard. Look at that move. Wow, Gregory. Oh, so they don't get the day off that we get. Cameras are not light on your shoulder either. Free throw miss by Donovan Gregory. And this is one of the guys, when we told you off the top, you know, Dustin Kearns was upset that they only had one guy earn all conference honors despite a 12 and 6 conference record. This was one of the guys that Kearns thought should have gotten some of those honors, said it was ridiculous that he didn't earn all conference honors. Called him their Draymond Green. That's a, big, that's a big time compliment. Well, just look at what's happened to the Warriors without Draymond Green. You'll know what he's talking yeah, about. And I don't disagree with him. He's the glue guy. He's the guy that gets the bucket when they need one. More of a mid-range guy, but big time competitor for that man right there. <laughs> So Delph picks up his first personal foul. That puts McCadden at the line. McCadden has not hit a shot from the field. He's 0 for 7. All his points at the free throw line. He's got three, three of four, six rebounds, five assists. He's done some other things. He's affected and impacted the game in other ways, but he hasn't been able to score. 
but it's just an eight-point game. Georgia Southern keeps hanging around. And he's a 49% shooter from the field. Forrest, and that's going to be an offensive foul on Forrest. Dustin Kearns is complaining that he got hit on the initial dribble, and I don't disagree with him. He's just strong enough where it didn't knock him off his stride. Can he knock Saversov over? Watch this when he first starts with the dribble. Shot fake right there. He's just yep. such a strong kid, and it didn't bother him. Then he knocked Weatherford over, excuse me. Don't disagree with Kearns right there, but the foul goes against Forrest nonetheless. That's three personals. Four team. Little ghost screen for the layup. Oh, Got to make that. Too many misses at the rim for Georgia Southern tonight. Gregory. And it rolls in for him. Second basket for Gregory. He's got eight to go with six rebounds. Cobbs lost it and then knocked it out of bounds. Think you're gonna call a foul on Cobbs. You're right, yep. they are. And that's gonna be number three on him. He reached in between the legs of uh, James Lewis Jr. to get the ball. He loses it right there and I get away, he knocked him down. He did grab the ball, but he knocked him down, hit him in the butt. Eagles 8 of 18 at the rim. Ten misses up close for Georgia Southern tonight. You can tell they're down ten, so it's a pretty big impact. Delp feeds inside to Lewis. He's in traffic, trying to get it up and can't. Stolen away by the Eagles. Then stolen back by Gregory, who slammed it home. Miami knocked to lose Gregory in the right place at the right time and finished with a 40. Lead back to 12 for App. Now, Monis has been out for a long time. He's coming back in now, but they did pretty well without their leader out there in the point guard. Archie inside in traffic. Whips it out to the corner. Kamari Brown air ball. Air ball from Kamari Brown. The defense interior by the Appalachian Mountaineers didn't give any kind of look to Caden Archie when he got in tight and didn't foul him. Kick back to Forrest here. Gregory starting to feel it. Big time shot there. 12 now for Gregory. You gotta have some strong lower body for that step back move, and Gregory's got it. Eagles, no field goals, four and a half plus minutes now. The lead is back to its largest, 14. Kamari Brown rises up and strokes it home. Again, he gets such great elevation really on does. his jump shot. Air ball one from the corner, like great athletes have a lousy memories. Give me the rock, I can make it, and he did. Under eight to go. Two three zone by the Eagles. Forrest nailed it. <laughs> New season high for James Forrest. He has 19. He's five of nine on his threes. Or is that a great addition to the Mountaineer offense, getting James Forrest in double figures? Folks are like, where has this been exactly. all year? Archie. Tough shot off the wrong yeah. foot. Archie was an ESPN four-star when he signed with TCU originally out of Midlothian High School in Dallas. Berg set up the recruiting relationship when Berg was at Texas Tech. And then when he went to TCU, went to UTEP. And Going out to break his career high. He's had a lot more 19. It's a season high. Season high, which shows you just how 
difficult a season it has been for him. He averaged 17 a game as a sophomore. McCadden goes up high and misses. This is when the Mountaineers are tough to catch because they're not going to force the pace. They're going to take it down to the end of a clock and they're going to go one on one and make a play. Bingo. Delp off glass. Delp, who is their leading scorer at 17 a game, that's just point number six. But they're winning, and that's all that matters. This lead is their largest of the game. And now it's even larger. Delp back to back baskets and a 17 point advantage for App State. Three Mountaineers in double figures, led by Forrest 19, Gregory 12. Now Monesey has 11. Inside they go to a Yambi. He got challenged at the rim and fouled. Foul's going to be on Delp, and that'll be his second. Delph and Duhart both hit him, but Adrian Delph gets the foul. Toyambi, eight points and four rebounds. Started his career in Cincinnati Bearcats. How about this one? Elias Asemi, Georgia State, and Prince Tommy both red shirted the same two years at Cincinnati. That means Cincinnati had better players than both of them for two years. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, it's hard to imagine. Toyambi will come out after hitting the free throws. He's now in double figures with 10, and Savrasov comes on the floor. And that coach is now the coach at UCLA. He was coach a Cincinnati Cronin. coach. Yep, Nick Cronin. Got so him to the Final Four last year. Yeah, you get those two, and you got two better ones. That's pretty impressive recruiting right there. Al Monesey kicks out. Mountaineers running a little clock here, five and a half to go. Coach Kearns just looked up the shot clock. I guarantee you they want single digits before they even think about going to the basket. Gregory, tip attempt by Duhart, Whoa, and jumps over his bench. I think the athletic trainer, no, somebody behind the bench caught him. Good catch by an administrative person for the Mountaineers. We still have not been able to get an update on C.J. Huntley, who was injured in the first half, took an elbow to the head. He has not reappeared in this game, which is not surprising. We'll see if he's going to be available for the semifinal, if indeed the App yep. Appalachian State Mountaineers advance, and it looks like they just might. He's sitting on the middle of the bench with a towel around him. Looks a lot better than he did when he walked off the floor right before halftime. Cobb circles. Four on the shot clock. They got a fire, and they do beat the shot clock. Archie got the offensive rebound, got capped from behind by Duhart, and then Duhart gets the rebound. Blocking a rebound for R.J. Duhart. You see C.J. Hunter on the bench. He's into the game mentally, jumping up and down, cheering his teammates on. That's a good sign because I don't think you'd be able to do that if you had a concussion. No, I agree. Dell on the feed to Gregory. What a pass. Great move by Delph. A better cut by Donovan Gregory and then received the pass. 17-point lead is their largest of the game. That's a team that really knows what to do at the end of a clock and practices it. A lot. Archie saw McCadden standing there, and that is the first field goal for McCadden. Comes with under four minutes to go. This is when this man, number five, Almonte, runs the show. Coach Kearns just called a set. Even if they don't shoot the ball and run the clock down, it's a plus. Eight on the shot clock, Almanasi throws a hook up there way off the mark. That's for the big guys, Mr. Almanasi. Saprasov missed the layup. One of those nights for the Eagles, so many opportunities around the rim with misses. Clock's approaching three to go.
This will be our first game decided by double digits out of eight in the men's side. Rebound Gregory. And now McCadden brings it up. Yeah, so 12 misses at the rim for the Eagles in this game. McCadden hits the free throw. And the Appalachian State Mountain New defense is good, but that's a lot of just misses. I mean, they're not that good. McCadden now with seven, but only one of ten shooting from the floor. Great press break right there. And now just sit on it until it gets down to single numbers. Coach Cummins is like, calm down, guys. We don't need to attack. Double team out. Modesty right got hit in the head. I'm pardon me, that was Forrest who got hit in the head there on the double team. This will be a one and one. Very physical game here in this quarterfinal. For us a chance to get to 20 points tonight. He hadn't done that all season. I see a little one-on-one -on -one action between James and his daddy. Be a heck of a game. Well, it might not be a good game. Excuse me, James and his daddy. Justin and his dad, James. Yeah. I don't know. I mean. That was a lot bigger. Well, maybe if they were in their prime. Good point. Justin is significantly younger. Missed the free throw, but he's got 20 points. And Dad is very proud, I'm sure. McCadden, wow. Lit on the basket for McCadden. He's missed 10 of 11 field goal attempts. Oh. Bryant missed right there. Just keep stacking up the misses at the rim. That's two more for Georgia Southern right there. 11 for 23, excuse me, nine. No, 11 misses out of 23 attempts. So we have our first ticket punched to the NCAA tournament. Murray State defeats Moorhead 77-61 to win the Ohio Valley Conference Championship. That's a big rivalry game. Those are the two best teams in that league. And as I said before, Murray State's coach, a former Appalachian State assistant, Appalachian State player and assistant coach. So how about that 71-67 win? The Racers are the first team in the field of 68. Well, they're undefeated in the league. I think they only lost two or three games. Let's see what the committee does as far as seeding for them. And McCadden hits a three-pointer finally for him on what has been a tough night. That cuts it to 11 with two to go. Still not out of the realm of possibility. Forrest backing up, throws it up there. That's stolen by the Eagles at half court in the corner. Three-pointer! Back court last time. They did foul. They didn't need to. They just they turned him over before, put a little pressure on him. Probably didn't do it intentionally, but did foul him. I think Delft's going to the line. So nine team fouls, so still the one and one here. And Delft will be the one shooting the foul shots. Archie was called for the foul, his second. Delp is two for two. The Mountaineers are 12 for 17. Nothing but net for Delp, who's got nine points, well below his per game average. And he has played, it looks like, all but one minute of this game. He's played 37 minutes. And the lead back to 10. Long three, off the mark, rebound to Hart. Another trap. Oh, great look up the floor. Duhart. 
That might be the finisher. Great look, trapped. Thought he was gonna panic, and Duhart was open and he found him. McCadden left it short, down on the deck, and possession arrow on a tie-up below. In the backcourt on both sides. So it appears that our semifinals will be the two, the three, the four, and the eight. And Gregory gets fouled by Weatherford. Very contrasting styles with Appalachia State and Georgia State. Georgia State wants to fly up, up the floor. Appalachia State not so much. Both teams really good defensively man-to-man. -man. Georgia State gets down in a stance and just challenges you to beat them. Had a tremendous defensive effort. Kane Williams, our Hercules Tires player of the game, had a career high seven steals, including the game clincher. It's an amazing job defensively. By himself, I mean, the whole team is good. He was special. Had a bunch of blocks, a bunch of steals. Leads 13. Eagles got to go in a hurry here. McCadden passes up a three. Kamari Brown will rise up and shoot a three. Off the mark. Will kick into the corner and out of bounds. Apps ball. Coach Berg told us not whether they win or lose, but this will be the first time in two years he gets to go recruit in person because of the COVID situation. He's a heck of a recruiter. He will fill the cupboard again. They're going to have a lot of departures out of this class. It's hard to say just yet because we're still kind of in all that COVID remake of the eligibility. So even when you see senior by their name doesn't necessarily mean that it's their last season. It's hard, to, it's really hard to tell. And it's hard for the coaches, all the coaches we talked to during the years, like, I think I know what year they are, but, and you don't know if they're gonna leave because of the transfer stuff, so. Right. It's nuts. Probably a few more years before we totally process out of all that. Dealt with the free throws. It's back to a 14-point lead. Their biggest lead has been 17. Time winding down on the Eagles. Archie, three, nailed it. Archie's had a fine game. Caden Archie with 15, five rebounds. Six of 11 shooting. Time now to salute our Hercules Tires player of the game, and it's James Forrest. Forrest, unbelievable game. 6 of 12 from the field, 5 of 9 from deep, 20 points, 2 assists. And good for him because you hate to see a guy as talented as he is, as many big shots as he has made, go out the way he has in this senior year, averaging less than 9 points per game. Tonight, he was more like the Justin Forrest we have been accustomed to see. And I'm sure he's thinking after this win, all right, here I go. I got one. Let me play again tomorrow. Biggest job Coach Kearns is going to have is calm him down. I don't think they'll be too excited. Get him, get some food in him, and get him off their feet because they got to play in less than 24 hours. Archie stepped through and hits the floater. 17 for Archie. So that was, uh, and tonight, back to his old self. McCadden, mm, what a day for him. Two for 14 shooting. Foul on Georgia Southern. That's going to send Gregory to the line. So four Mountaineers in double figures, led by Forrest with 20. Gregory's got 15 as he steps up to the line. Delp with 13. Almanasi with 11. Down there, stepped up a little bit, shooting 44% on the season. They're a 41% free uh, field goal shooting team, so that's pretty good. Gregory will finish close to a double-double. 16 points now and eight rebounds for him. A 
Interesting. Total rebounds, 37. 37. With all the misses around the rim for Georgia Southern, you would think yep. App would be ahead on the boards, but no. Archie air ball, and that should be the final shot unless Georgia Southern elects to foul again. All they do is get it over. That's it. Forrest, Georgia Southern going to back off here. And App State has defeated Georgia Southern by a final score of 73-60. App State moves another step.